Welcome back for another Torah Tuesday. Today we're going to do something a little bit differently. We're still working through this difficult text in Exodus chapter 4, but today I'm going to show you how it connects with the story of Jesus. Okay, so last week we had this micro scene in which Moses took leave of his father-in-law Jethro and asked permission to go back to Egypt, and Jethro gave him permission. This sets us up for the return. Now we have a recapitulation of Yahweh's commissioning in Exodus 4, verse 19, along with a reassurance that Moses' life is no longer in danger. So notice uh, verse 19, the, it says, Now Yahweh had said to Moses and Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all those who wanted to kill you are dead. And in verse 18, we had just had Moses say to Jethro, I want to see if any of my brothers are still alive. And Yahweh follows this with a reassurance that those who wanted to kill you are dead. So if there's any, any uh, remaining fear about returning to Egypt because when he left, he was a wanted man, he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. He's free to go back. He, his, he's getting a divine reassurance that Pharaoh is gone and there's a new Pharaoh in his place. Verse 20 then tells us that Moses took his wife and his sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt, and he took the staff of God in his hand. So he has the staff that's in, an important uh, symbol of, of Yahweh's authority that has been delegated to him that he's going to use to show signs, and he brings his wife and his sons on a donkey. And this should trigger uh, an association with a New Testament text. So I want to turn, I want to do something a little bit different. We'll reflect back on this verse as it connects to its context in another video. Um, but I wanted to spend a moment in Matthew chapter 2, because we have a very similar scene that unfolds in Matthew chapter 2, in which a Jewish baby boy his life is in danger because of a despotic baby-killing king, and he travels with his parents on a donkey to Egypt to escape from this king and is, is rescued. And then God tells Joseph, the baby's father, in a dream, uh, those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. And Interpreters, commentators have often noted, this is a little bit strange because Herod is one man. We've got one very paranoid king uh, of, of this region who is trying to take out any possible hint of competition, even if they're babies. So it's only Herod who has died. Um, but the angel speaks to Joseph in a dream in plural, those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. This is a direct echo of the, the verse that we just read in Exodus 4.19, those who wanted to kill you are dead. That's why it's plural. It's echoing the story and connecting these two incidents so that we remember uh, what's going on. So uh, just a few more thoughts on Matthew chapter 2. So we have the child at risk. They the, the difference in this story, this is like an inside out Exodus story. Instead of fleeing the despotic ruler who's in Egypt and fleeing away from Egypt, Joseph and Mary and Jesus flee to Egypt to take refuge, uh, to get away from Herod. So verse, chapter 2 of Matthew, uh, verse 14 says, So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, which is exactly what's going on in Exodus 4. Moses takes his wife and sons, and the, the tricky incident is going to happen on their way to Egypt at night. And they left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. We are about to read a passage in Exodus 4 in which Yahweh identifies Israel as his firstborn son. And he, the book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea, says in chapter 11, verse 1, um, Out of Egypt I called my son. And it's reflecting back, it's Hosea reflecting back on, or Yahweh through Hosea reflecting back on, the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. And Matthew is connecting that with what's going on with Jesus, taking refuge in Egypt. What's going on here is kind of mind-blowing, and you could spend a lot of time in these first few chapters of Matthew and see how it plays out. 
but Jesus is reliving Israel's story. According to Matthew, Jesus is the true Israel. Jesus is experiencing what Israel went through, and that's going to qualify him to speak into Israel's experience of ongoing captivity, ongoing exile, and to finally set them free. So uh, according to Matthew, um, there's something really profound going on in the sort of symbolic similarities between Jesus' childhood and Moses' experience. So that's just a little tidbit bonus. I don't usually take you into the New Testament, but I thought we'd do that today because of this deliberate echo of the plural, those who are seeking to kill you are dead. All right. I hope that was fun. Uh, Next week, we'll get back to Exodus chapter 4 and continue through this tricky passage. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.